Hello friends, welcome to Astro Crescent. My name is Pavan Bhardwaj. I have made a couple of videos on my Celestron Edge HD 8-inch telescope. Those videos include the unboxing and initial review, installing a dew heater ring and installing an SV Bonnie guide scope on top of it. When I purchased this telescope, I got this as a gift from my family. I also purchased a Celestron T adapter, which is specifically made for Edge HD telescopes and a Celestron 0.7x reducer lens, which is also specifically made for this telescope. Today, I will be talking about this lens, installing it to complete my imaging train using the ZWO filter drawer and my ZWO ASI 533MC Pro camera. So let's do it together. In today's video, first I will talk about some of the features of this reducer lens. Then I will see how I can achieve a proper back focus with a ZWO filter drawer and ASI 533MC Pro camera using the Celestron T-Ring. We will also see how we can use the Celestron Edge HD 8-inch telescope without using the reducer lens. Later, I'll go to my computer and check which targets will require the use of Celestron reducer lens and which targets do not require this. The Celestron Edge HD 8-inch telescope has a native focal length of 2032 millimeters or 203 centimeters. This is a long focal length. The native focal ratio of this telescope is f10, which is very slow. The first thing that this reducer lens will do is to reduce the focal length by a factor of 0.7. That means from 2032 millimeters, the focal length will come down to 1422 millimeters. At the same time, the field of view of the telescope will increase by 43%. Also, the use of this reducer will double the imaging speed. That means for the same target, the imaging time may be reduced to one half, which is definitely a benefit considering that we have very few clear nights and the imaging time is very short. One more way to reduce the focal length of Edge HD 8-inch telescope is to use Hyperstar, which makes it very, very fast at F2 focal ratio. Hyperstar also makes the focal length or brings down the focal length to 425 millimeters, but that is an expensive option. When we use the 0.7x reducer lens, it makes the telescope one full f-stop faster than f10. In other words, the focal ratio comes down to f7. Talking about the features of this lens. This reducer lens has a four element lens design. That means there are four lenses inside this housing. Each of the lens has been multi-coated in order to allow maximum amount of light to pass through. The edges of each lens, they are blackened so that there is no internal reflection of light. One thing we have to remember that this is not a corrector lens. This is not a field flattener. This is only a reducer lens. It only reduces the focal length from 2032 millimeter to 1422 millimeters and brings down the focal ratio from f10 to f7. Since Edge HD is also a Smith Cassegrain telescope, like the Celestron 8 inch SCT, but it has a built in field flattener. We do not need a corrector lens here, we only need a reducer. And the Celestron 0.7x reducer lens serves that purpose. Even after attaching the 0.7x reducer lens, the Edge HD 8-inch telescope maintains its flat field performance similar to the one at its native focal ratio of f10. The field of view is increased by 43%. That means we can have a larger area of the sky to image. Mechanically speaking, the focal reducer has a nice CNC machined aluminum housing. It has two threaded 
dust caps, one on each side. So these dust caps are very useful when we do not want to use the reducer lens for a particular target and we need to store it for some time. The one page instruction manual which comes with the reducer lens clearly indicates that the back focus requirement for the reducer lens is 105 millimeters. Let's see how we can achieve that for building an imaging train. I have watched a number of videos on YouTube which talk about attaching the reducer lens to Edge HD 8 inch telescope. But most of the people they are using off axis guiders and filter wheels in their imaging train and of course monochrome cameras. In my particular setup, I do not have an off axis guider and I do not have a filter wheel. Uh, but I have a simple uh, ZWO filter drawer because I will be using a one-shot color cam. So let's see how we can achieve back focus of 105 millimeters. Let me put this aside for a while. The first thing I have to do is to remove the visual back and the reducer lens will be attached to the back side of the telescope. So this thing goes first. Let me remove the covers, put them aside for some time. So first the reducer lens will be attached. From the edge of the reducer lens, the back focus distance is 105 millimeters. I will remove the extension of the T adapter. The T adapter will be attached on top of the reducer lens. After this, a 16.5 millimeter spacer. But the thread on the spacer is M48 and the thread size on the T adapter is M42. So what I will need is an M48 to M42 thread adapter. Not one, but two pieces. I have already attached one of them in the spacer. I will need one more inside that. Or I can attach it first here and then one more inside this that will ensure that the edges of the T adapter and the spacer they flush with each other. After this I will attach my filter drawer. Once again the thread on the 16.5 millimeter spacer is M42 and the thread size on the ZWO filter drawer is M48. I will need one more M48 to M42 thread adapter, which will go on top of this or inside this. The ZWO filter door is 21 millimeter. The distance it provides to the imaging train is 21 millimeters. Then I have 11 millimeter spacer on top of my one shot color camera, which is ASI 533MC Pro. And from the edge of the camera, up to the sensor, which you can say just at this point, where you see the black dot is 6.5 millimeters. That would make up my 105 millimeter back focus distance. 50 millimeters here, plus 16.5 millimeters, plus 21 millimeters, plus 11 millimeters and 6.5 millimeters. So let's now attach all these components to the back of the telescope to see how it looks like. I'll move the camera closer so you can see what I'm doing. So remove the visual back. Attach the focal reducer first. Then the Celestron T adapter. Then 
M48 to M42 thread adapter. When you attach the thread adapter, make sure the groove, hope you can see that, is a groove over here. It goes inside, so it is easy to remove it using a nose plier. You need one more M48 to M42 thread adapter and I have already uh, inserted it or screwed it in the 16.5 millimeter spacer because I was using the same camera on my other imaging tray. Next goes my ZWO filter drawer. But I will need one more M48 to M42 thread adapter because the thread size here is M48 and the thread size here is M42. So once again I'll make sure that the groove, the two cuts here, they are outer side. After this goes my camera, which has an 11 millimeter spacer already attached to it. Make sure they are neither too tight nor they are loose. This is specifically very important for me because I need this part of the imaging plane on a different telescope also. Cost is a concern for me. Now the back focus, of 105 millimeter is set from this edge of the 0.7x reducer lens and the sensor of the camera, which is 6.5 millimeters inside the casing. This is the 105 millimeter back focus distance. Now I can connect my camera. So that completes my imaging train with Celeston 0.7x reducer and ZWO filter drawer and of course my one shot color camera. One good thing about uh, this whole setup is that uh, the tearing, Celestron tearing allows me to rotate the camera at any point of time so that uh, my target is, is centered in the frame, it's not tilted. Just loosen the T adapter from here, rotate your camera and tighten it again. This is particularly very useful uh, when we are having mosaics when a single target is divided into several parts, four parts or six parts. And this does not affect the back focus distance of the imaging train. What if I do not have to use the 0.7x reducer? The reducer lens is used when I need a wider field of view. But in certain cases, I don't need that. I need the full 2032 millimeter focal length. How do I complete that back focus requirement? Let's see that. According to the instruction sheet, which comes with the 0.7x reducer, the optimum photographic back focus of Edge HD 8 inch telescope is 133 millimeters. That means when we do not use a reducer lens, we must have 133 millimeters back focus distance. How do we achieve that? Let's see. In fact, it's very easy. We remove the focal reducer and replace it with the T adapter along with its extension, which is 28 millimeters. Let's do that. So remove the T adapter. Remove the focal reducer. Make sure you screw on the lens caps to prevent dust from accumulating on the lenses. So remove the T adapter from the 16 millimeter spacer. Remove the M48 to M42 thread adapter. Attach the 28 millimeter extension of the T adapter. Screw on the M48 to M42 thread adapter. 
we need two of them and uh, I already have one on my 16.5 millimeter spacer so that will now go on top of this and this whole thing will now be attached to the back of the telescope that's it so this is the imaging train without the 0.7x reducer but with a ZWO filter door and ASI 533 MC Pro uh, cooled color camera with the 0.7x reducer we did not have this 28 millimeter distance so our back focus distance was 105 millimeter we removed the reducer lens and added 28 millimeter spacer here so now the total back focus distance is 105 plus 28 which is equal to 133 millimeters and that satisfies the requirement of uh, the back focus distance for this edge hd 8 inch telescope and it is given here very clearly in this sheet this sheet comes with the reducer lens and it is also available on Celestron website as a PDF document. Next, I will go to my computer and check Astronomy Tools website to get some examples of what imaging targets will need the Celestron 0.7x reducer, a wider field of view, and what other targets may not need that. On the Astronomy tools website in the imaging mode i have selected my telescope as celestron c8 edge hd the website knows the native focal length which is 2032 millimeters and the aperture is 203 millimeters i have selected my camera as zwo asi 533 mc pro which has a resolution of 3008 by 3008 pixels the pixel size is 3.76 by 3.76 micrometers i am not selecting any barlow or any reducer lens now i will select one of the messy object objects for example let's go to lagoon nebula click on add to view and i can see clearly that green borderline it does not cover the entire target now if i add 0.7 x reducer add to view the nebula is now inside my imaging frame look at the purple colored border now let's take one more example i'll go to m33 which is a triangulum galaxy the green borderline shows the field of view without the focal reducer and the purple border shows the field of view with the reducer lens. That means for this particular target, I'll, I will have to use the reducer lens. For solar system, I can select any of the targets here, but most of the planets will be too small with the 7x reducer. I don't need that except for the moon. So let me select moon here and see what happens the green square border shows the field of view without the 0.7x reducer whereas the purple border shows the field of view with the reducer the moon still does not fit completely into the field of view for any other planet for example jupiter you can see it is too small even for a 2032 millimeter telescope so instead of using the reducer lens i might have to use a 2x or 3x Barlow. Let me select another messy object. The Whirlpool Galaxy. Add to view. So this is the field of view for the Whirlpool Galaxy without the reducer lens. Now I will add the 0.7x reducer. Add to view. The field of view is wider now. This means for this particular target I do not need the reducer lens. It is better that I use the telescope without the reducer lens. One more example of another galaxy. Take Bode's galaxy M81 which is a very popular target. Again I do not need the reducer lens here. The white border shows the field of view without the reducer lens which is good enough. I do not have to do any cropping. So these were some of the examples. Uh, you can select any messy object. You can select any solar system, planet, or you can search for any NGC or IC objects here. 
Select the telescope as Celestron C8 Edge HD. Select your camera, whatever you are using, and check with or without the reducer lens uh, whether the target is better suited without the reducer lens or with the reducer lens. That's all for today. I will see you next time in next video. Until then, clear skies. Thank you very much for watching.